How's everybody tonight? Good. We're giving out money, so you should feel good. All right. It's not a lottery check, but it's going to you know, help put some gas in the car, right? So we are excited to invite you to our third annual, um, the Prosperity Foundation's third annual uh, Grants Give event. It used to be called an initiative, but now that we're in our third cycle of strengthening African-American communities in the state of Connecticut, it is no longer an idea. It is no longer an initiative. It is an actual working program. And we cannot thank the community enough for trusting and embracing the idea of black philanthropy through this black foundation so that we can continue uh, to strengthen our community. So give yourselves a hand uh, for believing in the process, believing in the future, and believing in the Prosperity Foundation. I'm going to call up now the vice president of our board, Mr. Larry Conway, for the official welcome to this evening. You can clap while he comes up. Thank you. Good evening. And I want to give everybody a formal welcome to the third annual grants giveaway. Uh, and as Orsella said, my name is Larry Conaway. And I'm the vice president of the Prosperity Foundation. I've been involved for approximately five years. I got involved in the philanthropy in about 2004. And I was invited to make a contribution to a male involvement fund, and I had no idea, I had no idea what it was about. Um, I always thought philanthropy was for those individuals with uh, a lot of money. And at that time, when I was asked to make that contribution, I didn't have any money. Um, so um, I've since done that in 04, and um, that was the Mail Involvement Network. And then 2015, um, I decided to start another fund for my family called the Conaway Fund. And uh, that, that, that fund is growing. And then my, the last fund I got involved with was last year was with my church, St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in New Haven, Connecticut, which is now closed, but we do have an alumni fund. So um, I just want to just say welcome to everybody. Um, philanthropy is a, uh, is a beautiful thing. Um, thank you for coming from all corners of the state and out of state. And we're going to have a wonderful program. So again, welcome. Thank you, Larry. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Eve Joseph, and I am the treasurer of the Prosperity Foundation. So whenever folks are looking for money, they call me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Y'all don't need my number no more. <laughs> but um, very blessed to be here with you all today. Thank you for coming. Um, we're very proud to be able to you know, have this day, which is our third consecutive and our third annual grant give event. Um, when we started this organization, when I started getting involved four or five years ago, um, one of the things that you know, I spoke to Howard about as the chair, as I said, you know, in the black community, we seem to build a lot of organizations, a lot of infrastructure that become fly by night. Um, they're very exciting, they're very shiny, they're very impressive, they're kind of flash in the pan and they go away. And so you know, the community kind of gets you know, disillusioned with, you know, will this thing have staying power? Will this next best thing kind of stay with us and be reliable? Can we uh, predictably kind of come back to it year in and year out, year in and year out? So, you know, longevity, consistency has been one of the things that we've really been trying to drive with TPF. And so, you know, to be able to be here before you for the third year in a row, um, I think we should give these guys a round of applause for that. So I think that's That's, that's a big moment. Um, you know, the other thing that we're really proud of is that we've, we've grown. You know, it's, it's not just about showing up every year to support these organizations, but year over year, we've been showing up in a more meaningful, more impactful way. Um, three years ago, we did this event, I believe, in this room, and we gave, I think, $25,000 out. 
And we were, we were happy. We were like $25,000 we gave to, you know, 20 organizations or whatever the number was. And we were so excited. And people were really, um, really thrilled to be getting these resources from a community that looks like them. So that was a very powerful statement. We came back the next year. Last year, we gave $36,000 out. And we we're like, oh, man, we just grew it by, by $10,000. That's great. We're making progress. It's $10,000, you know. But, um, you know, that's another four or five organizations that we were able to impact. Uh, incrementally that we weren't able to impact the year before. So we're kind of making our short, methodical steps. It may not look big to a lot of big people, but to us, we're very pleased with that progress. But um, this year, you know, we, we've, just, um, we've just been blessed. We've had a lot of new supporters. Uh, the William, Kras Ka William Casper Grouse Memorial Foundation has stepped up tremendously for us. The Community Foundation has stepped up tremendously for us, and we'll be giving out $55,000 tonight. So, um, you know, I'm a business school nerd, so I like graphs that go up. <laughs> and our graph, is, our graph is going up. Um, you know, they asked me to say a few brief words about the purpose history of the, of the grant give, and um, I'll, try, I'll try to be brief. I mean, the Prosperity Foundation fundamentally does um, three things. Um, we, we, we consider ourselves a steward of the black community's philanthropic capital. And what that means is individuals will provide philanthropy philanthropic donations to the Prosperity Foundation to invest those proceeds, to grow those funds so that they can be invested back into the community. And so we act on behalf of individuals in the community, such as yourselves, as a fiduciary steward responsible for investing and growing dollars. So that's one thing that we do. Um, a second thing that we do at the Prosperity Foundation is we promote educational initiatives to inform our community in areas of economic development, health, and education. And so we try to generate programming, speakers, panels, um, literature to help us become more, more intelligent, more, more, more learned, more, uh, more thoughtful about the experience that we're going through so that we can start to create solutions uh, for the problems and challenges that we're facing every day. So educational piece on those is the second thing we do. And the third thing we do is we fund smaller organizations um, in the black community that are specifically focused on addressing critical needs and issues that are affecting the black community. And today is the embodiment of that third pillar of what the Prosperity Foundation's work is. What we found is that there are a lot of big foundations, whether it be Ford or uh, Bill and Melinda Gates or whomever, who are you know, awarding sizable amounts of money to groups, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, to different initiatives around the world, saving the whales. Um, but what? Whales, whales need love, too. It's important. You know? <laughs> But, 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 but a lot of the black community's organizations fall through the cracks because we're too small, we don't have the infrastructure, and candidly, a lot of times we don't have the confidence to think that we can pursue a Ford grant and, and be eligible for it. And so we said all these, guys, these folks, these men and women, are doing this important work, this God's work, and they're getting overlooked. So how do we build infrastructure to help support them? And so that's the work we've been trying to do and um, I mean, you'll hear the testimonies. You, some of you are recipients, and um, you know some some of these groups will bring tears to your eyes in terms of the, the impact that they're having in our backyards, asking for no accolades. They're not trying to be on the news. They're just doing the, doing the hard work. So that is the history, the purpose, the mission of the grant give. I thank you, truthfully, for for participating, and I hope you get as much out of today as as, as we do. And we are blessed to have um, previous recipients to um, give a testimony of what that grant meant to their organization. Um, so we have two this evening. First would be the Hang Time organization out of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and Girls for Technology out of Hartford, Connecticut. So Ms. Holmes will come now and speak to us about how our grant um, impacted and what it meant for black philanthropy, uh, what it meant for your organization. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Shamir Holmes, and I am representing Her Time and Hang Time. Uh, Her Time and Hang Time was founded by Mr. Charles Grady, who could not be here. Um, every Tuesday in the city of Bridgeport, we host Hang Time, where we service men and women in the community who are coming home from incarceration. We help with that transition. So for four years, because of in-kind donations and because of organizations such as the Prosperity Foundation, we have been able to help over 60 men and women get jobs. We have been able to provide transportation. 
Yep. Um, we have been able to connect these young men and women who are coming home, and you know, Bridgeport does claim to be the the reentry um, city. Uh, mass incarceration is real in the city. We have young men and women being locked up at alarming rates. So the fact that Mr. Grady saw fit that we start something here in the city of Bridgeport for for men and women who need those services, it, it's been a blessing. So besides transportation and connecting them to housing, we started something called Hang Time Mobile, where every quarter, because of the funds of, through the Prosperity Foundation, every quarter we're able to travel to a different city that we learn about that week before. Um, DC was in September. In December was New York, and this weekend we'll be heading to Philly just because we have the funds to take young men and women. So, um, and also last year, uh, Her Time was just kicking off, so I'm proud to report back that Her Time celebrated its one year anniversary on March the 9th, and we've been going really strong. Her Time was founded a year ago uh, because the women of these men who were come into this program every Tuesday from six to eight willingly, not forced by choice, coming willingly. They're like, where are you going every Tuesday, six to eight? And you're not hungry, you're not eating my meal, what's going on? So <laughs> these women, they were raising these questions, so the men started bringing their women, and they're like, listen, you guys get all these services, but while you're locked away and while you're still transitioning, we need help too. What, what's in it for us? We still need the housing, we need help getting food and connecting to jobs. So Her Time was founded, and I am so grateful because even though we don't meet every Tuesday, like hang time, we meet every first Thursday of the month where we partnered with the Center for Family Justice, where we provide the same services for the men, helping with jobs, um, helping uh, with transportation, uh, housing opportunities. We also service the women who are, I guess, victims of domestic violence and sexual abuse. The Center for Family Justice has been a pillar in the community for those topics, so they tackle the trauma. They have on-site counselors and childcare provided every first Thursday of the month when we are there meeting. So it's just been a blessing to partner with them. Um, and for this one year, our first year, just meeting one Thursday of the month, we were able to touch 250 women and children. So, it is because of organizations and foundations like the Prosperity Foundation that looks for the people who are doing the grassroots work, but we really don't have that big umbrella, that overhead, because we really take pride in being a black-owned and black-founded organization here in the city of Bridgeport. Yes, we can use all the help that we get, but we pride ourselves on angel donors, and we love that we have been getting by, and we do want to grow, but we love starting and knowing that it's because of people like you in this room who believe in African American and Hispanic people to become better. And um, I'm excited to be here, and I, I'm just grateful for the opportunity just to give you guys a report of what's going on. And we want to grow, and we will keep you in a loop, and we hope to have better reports next year. Um, just stay in a loop. You can follow us on Facebook. Hang Time and Her Time has a page, so uh, it's, you can always do that. And also, we'll be definitely kicking off um, some more social media presence just to keep everyone in a loop and be able to report back accordingly. So thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. As founder and CEO of Girls for Technology, I am here to give a special thank you to Howard K. Hill, his lovely wife, I don't see her, um, and the Prosperity Foundation for granting Girls for Technology another year of giving. Before coming here, I told my mom that I was coming to speak and I was a little nervous, and she says, well, you're not running for president, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As a startup grassroots nonprofit, I'm often seeking various types of grants, in particular grants that support girls of color, education, and STEM. It's not too often that you found, found, find foundations that um, fund locally or nationally, for that matter, focuses on black philanthropy or some might say black giving. One might ask, why would the Prosperity Foundation fund such initiatives such as Girls for Technology? When it comes to economic sustainability for the black community, which is an area I know the Prosperity Foundation is passionate about, STEM fields open the pathway. But we must help build and nurture that talent pipeline at a young age. 
Our mission at Girls for Technology is to empower the next generation of girls to explore opportunities to become tomorrow's leaders in STEM. One of our newest program initiatives is called Women Who STEM Series. Every Monday during our after school program, we use Microsoft Education to host weekly, um, weekly speak, a weekly speaker who um, speaks with the students about their journey through STEM. It is very important that our girls have interactions with positive role models that look like them and inspire them to one day be maybe the next computer scientist, the next Mae Jameson, mechanical engineer, or even a venture capitalist. Um, and in order to do that, we must tr change the trajectory in life and help eradicate the poverty that often, well too often, you know, influences our community. This year's funds from the foundation will be used to provide hands-on summer enrichment opportunities. Because of the Prosperity Foundation, we are able to reach more girls' lives. There's a quote that states, silent gratitude isn't much use to anyone, and I totally agree. I wanna say thank you out loud. I wanna say, I wanna tell everyone that, um, I'm sorry. I want to tell everyone I know um, that the Prosperity Foundation has really meant a lot to Girls for Technology. Girls for Technology is far from, Girls for Technology is far from over doing the work that we have done. Um, we are just getting started. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am so honored that you're here this evening. This just make, this is a feel good moment for me because it's been a long time coming. Right, Howard? <laughs> I'm Kathy Graves' board member. <laughs> Re recent board member. <laughs> and I won't go into details, Howard can do that. Uh, this evening, we are honored to have Bethia Carter President and CEO of New England Blacks in Philanthropy. And they're based in Boston. And Blathia and I go back over 10 years, and I think most of that time was spent on the phone until we finally met in Chicago. That's when we finally met. We officially met in Chicago. Bethia sets vision and course for work for changing the work and the landscape of philanthropy. And I'm gonna say that again. She sets vision and course for work in changing the landscape of philanthropy. It is time, folks, for us to view it differently. It's for us by us, okay? She sets landscape, changes the landscape for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And she makes the best use with economic resources in our communities. She's been doing this for a long time. It took me a minute to come around, but once she got me, she got me. She's passionate about connecting interests of affinity groups and aligning them across businesses, public, private, and the media sectors to achieve impact. She definitely achieves Impact. You're in for a treat this evening, Bethia Carter, my friend. Um, thank you so much for having me here this evening. I'm Bethia Carter from New England Blacks and Philanthropy, and um, I would say probably when I started this work, my um, hair kind of looked like that. Now I'm having my Wakanda forever moment. <laughs> But, you know, when um, Kathy Gray's call you, um, you come, and if Howard's in the room, either you come or you pay. <laughs> so, um, I decided that I needed to come. But seriously, I wouldn't dare miss tonight. This is work of the Prosperity Fund. is a serious work of really, really, really a beloved, beloved, beloved community. This work from inception was drawn from the vision of how we could use our best fruit to really support the future of us. I know this because I met a nurse in a funeral home when we first started talking about this work and where we could go. So, you know, as I was thinking about this work and what is it we're doing? There are, com there are a lot of things that came to mind, whether it's narrative change, like who's in our community, what is our community? So many things came to mind, like 
the high visibility incidents that we're all seeing about our communities that are thrusted upon us, whether it's the front page of the newspaper, whether it's the top of the evening and morning newspaper, placing us at the center of dinnertime conversations, placing us into social gatherings sometimes that we're not even in, forcing a social gathering, but forcing a national outcry demanding justice not just justice, but declaring it's time to get serious. Not for other people, but for us as well. For example, we may think that the needle on police brutality has moved, but not really. According to the Washington Post, a thousand people died in 2017. That's two dozen more than the year before. And also, this is nearly identical to 2015 and the same number of people at the start of the Black Lives Matter movement of 2013. We gotta get serious. The shooting of African Americans is not just a local matter that should be left up to local authorities as suggested by the White House, but rather this is a war against the American people our people, it's a war against us, that the White House must pay attention to. As we think about gun violence, but also we have to think about what's happening to our community as well, as we come back to people that are besieged on with mental health and the trauma of all of this violence that's happening to us. And why? Because our opportunities are not fully recognized. Opportunities like economic opportunity, health, well-being, cripples our ability to really fulfill our destiny. Nationwide, we know that 80% of the 16 million children who live in poverty in this country live in just 20% of the zip codes. We also know that 76% of our 28 and a half million adults, 25 years and older, who do not have a high school diploma, that's real in 2000, the 21st century, reside in just 20% of our zip codes in America. So the question is, are we serious this time? Really, are we serious this time? Are we serious enough to use our philanthropic gifts, all of our philanthropic gifts, time, talent, treasure, to really address issues of our communities, whether it's the research that informs the policies, that create the laws, that impact our community. How do we look at all of it? Advocacy, social justice, grassroots work. How do we work together to make our communities whole? We've heard it all in the past. It was the Monaghan Report who blamed us for the issues that they created with ill-informed policies and crushing, crushing institutionalized racism, or the Kerner Commission that concluded that the nation was headed towards two Americas, one black, one white, we've heard it all before, separate and unequal. We realized then we needed to get serious, and we know it today that we need to get serious, and because these factors are still with us today. So what do we need to do? I think there are a couple of things that we can think about doing. No more first black rules. No more only black rules. We only get an award now if you bring 10 of us along. I think there are a few more things that we can do. We can use, we need more Rosa Parks. And when I think about Rosa Parks, there were plenty of other girls before her. Claudette Colvin, who was 15 and full of herself and full of her blackness. There were women in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, 1950s. Audrey Browder, Viola White, Geneva Johnson, Katie Wingfield, Susan McDonald, Epsi Worthy, and many, many others who gave up their seat. But Rosa Parks made sure that their seat was not given up in vain. So what did she do that was a little bit different? She used her middle classness, her uppityness, and all that bougie-ness that they said she had, and said, I'm serious this time. I'm getting on that bus. She was intentional. She got on that bus. She went to that seat, and she started a movement. That's what we have to do with our philanthropic group gifts. We have to start a movement, because no one is going to start it but us. We need to support this fund and make sure that it grows. We need to double down on this for us, by us mentality. We need to control the destinies of our community by giving to this fund. Even the title of it, 
the prosperity fund, reaches into the future and shows us what we can become. Because we know that you cannot solve life cycle issues on a grant cycle mentality. I'm going to say that one more time. We cannot solve life cycle issues with a grant cycle mentality. So it's important for us to, to work with organizations like Hain Time and Her Time. As they told us, these are, we need to be by their sides because to build stronger communities is to strengthen the people who live in them and to create viable opportunities, is to show our most vulnerable, not the middle, not the best, and always, it's great to reward our best, but it's also to show the most vulnerable of us, our sisters and brothers, that they have a reason to hope too. And this hope comes with a vision. And this is serious. We have to set that vision because we know that he that controls the image controls the mind. We need to control our image. Our children need to see us as philanthropists. It is important that we give black. Giving Black is the name of our work, and we take it seriously. Howard was there with us from the very beginning, and we are serious about this mission because we need, our children need, the world need to see us in our philanthropic glory. We need to give our time, talent, and treasure even when no one is looking because we know that these images control the way that other people see us, the way people interact with us, the way that sometimes we even interact with each other. So therefore, I would besiege the grantees. I pray that you be kind in the way that you talk about our communities. Be careful in the way that you talk about us when you're trying to go before funders, to look really towards our strength, look at what's good in us, and build upon that rather than our deficits. Like girls in technology, as we so eloquently told us, how they're building and opening pathways for our girls to become our leaders for tomorrow. But then, it goes back to this, the thoughts are really simple. Are we serious this time? And this question compels us to ask, how are we focusing t attention on our communities and building our stronger communities? If we're serious about addressing our vast inequities, our vast injustices, we, make sure, we must make sure we create a pathway of hope and opportunity, not just for our children, but for all children, regardless of where they live. We have to be serious enough to ensure that freedom from harassment, from freedom from school expulsion, freedom from unnecessary incarceration, from freedom from constant exposure to mind-numbing hope and expectation stealing violence is real for all of our children. So the question is, how do we use our privilege our black privilege, because we got privilege yeah. to get serious about our community and our work. Again, he that controls the image controls the mind. And so therefore, we must make sure that we show an image of prosperity, not just for us, not just for our community, but for our children and into the future. So this is our Wakanda moment. Let's get serious. Yeah. 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 Wow, that he that controls the image controls the mind. That was, I mean, everything you said was just powerful and yes, Wakanda forever. Yes. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm feeling it now. <laughs> Got my vibranium going, this is good. Thank, thank you so much. Let's give Miss Bathaya another hand. You hit, you hit everything that we talk about in our board meetings. You, you hit everything that we, we pray about and we hope for. And so we, we hope that everyone has received that message the way it was delivered. It was delivered with intentionality. It was delivered with authenticity. And we have no choice but to leave here and take what you said serious. Thank you so very much. 
So we are now at the point where we are here to uh, bless and be a blessing to so many of you organizations here in the state of Connecticut. Um, you all have done an amazing work and you've presented amazing proposals. And so we are honored that out of over 57 applications, um, you were the 22 that were chosen this year, but we wanna be able to make sure that we hit every organization um, in years to come. And so as you, your names are called and you're gonna come up and receive your gift, uh, we're going to limit you now. We gotta go to church for a second. You get, you get one to two minutes. <laughs> and one minute. 32 seconds is what you're telling. <laughs> Uh, no, but in all seriousness, your, your work is great, and you know we're certainly going to highlight that in a, a, on our website in a longer uh, format. However, there are 22 of you. Um, I serve as scholars in Bridgeport, and really work on using sports as a carrot. And remedial reading, writing, and math is very important. Our scholars are not testing well and not going on to second and post education. So through this grant. This opportunity, I'm able to fund our summer camp and take them on field trips, and I thank you kindly. Um, I don't like getting in front of people because I do this for the love of God. This is my mission, this is my calling, and that's why I do this on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to receive two letters, and so we're asking that you sign one and sign both, but make sure that I receive the other one before you leave. Thank you. And that timing was perfect. Next is from the Bridgeport Youth Lacrosse, Mr. Donald Wilson. Thank you. Lacrosse. Okay. When. Uh, Thank you, thank you to the Prosperity Foundation. I really appreciate this gift. Um, the work has been uh, hard. You know, I've been doing this for 10 years, trying to educate the community about lacrosse. Mm -hmm. It's a very affluent game that affords our kids in the community an opportunity to go to college. And that's what we've been promoting for the last 10 years. And I'm happy to be here tonight to share that mission and share that glory with everybody here. And I feel really honored and blessed to be here. Thank you, guys. From Cook and Grow, Miss Mona Jackson. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chef Mona Jackson, CEO and founder of Cook and Grow. And I have been doing this for nine years. And I thank the Prosperity Foundation for recognizing um, what we do with children and that our children, like everybody says, they are our future. But if you don't teach them how to be healthy, you're, we're not going to have a future with our kids. And um, I totally appreciate. And I appreciate Senator uh, Moore being here and, and candidate um, Carol Vermont for being here. I don't know if you're here to support us, but I'm glad you're here. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Can I take this? Okay. Okay, great. Senator, my state senator, Miss Marilyn Moore, representing Witness Project of Connecticut. Now, you know I'm a politician and you want to give me a minute. What's that about? <laughs> thank you. That's, that's the most sincere thank you that I can give you for a black organization to understand the needs. And I've been around for 20 years doing breast cancer education. For you to understand, uh, I just want to say to Mr. Joseph, you are right on with your comments uh, that you've made through and through, and they resonate in my heart. It's like this is the third time I've heard this today, so I know where it's coming from. So bless you, bless this foundation. We're going to be able to, so I do breast cancer education, screening and support, but the money has dwindled down to practically nothing. This is gonna allow us to do social media uh, and use another venue instead of going out trying to get people to come out to talk to us to go on social media and talk about breast cancer, early detection, connect them to services. I'm seeing more and more women diagnosed in their 20s and 30s, and that is what they use to communicate. 
They don't come out to the meetings that we used to come out at the church and other organizations. So I thank you 1,000 times for the support. Mr. Hill, thank you for bringing this together. I appreciate it. Thank you. Moving to Hartford uh, County, representing the Urban League of Greater Hartford, Miss Adrian, I wish you, Miss Adrian. Ms. Carol Jimenez is going to receive in her place. Oh, my email buddy. <laughs> Our emails have been best friends for three years, and we just met tonight for the first time. <laughs> I know, and I love the outfit. Don't think. Sure. And you got 32 seconds. <laughs> Good Lord, I'm Latina, so you know we talk. <laughs> So on behalf of the Urban League of Greater Hartford, um, we are extremely appreciative to the Prosperity Foundation and Mr. Howard K. Hill for this amazing award. Um, we are 54 years strong this year. So yay. So uh, for all of um, you guys that may not know, we are actually located on 140 Woodland Street right in Hartford. Um, and our mission is to reduce economic disparities through our um, in our communities through programs and services and educational opportunities. So with this money, we are actually going to be able to expand our workforce program where we assist individuals between the ages of 18 and 24 get jobs and sustain jobs and be able to be accountable so they don't go back into the cycle. So we are going to be able to allow them and provide them an opportunity to get a driver's license. Because as we know, that is a hindrance for those that want to be reintegrated into the workforce. So we are very thankful for this opportunity and thank you to all you guys who are here, press and represent and give. So thank, thank you. you. I think I did this. <laughs> Representing an organization named Dominique is Mr. Torrance Conaway. There he is. Thank you guys for having us. Um, this is the Power of Partnership right here. Um, my name is Torrance Conaway. The project that we are going to partner on is a film called Dominic. It's a short film, and the film's goal is to really spread awareness regarding domestic violence to young African-American males. Um, I've been in the field for about a decade, but working primarily with um, African-American males as it relates to domestic violence for the past 10 years. I'm a facilitator for um, an organization called Wheeler Clinic um, in partnership with Opportunities Industrialization Center and a startup foundation, our foundation, um, Training and Motivation Center. Um, we are excited to, to bring this um, new idea to um, young males as well as females um, in our communities to kind of show them the different um, aspects of domestic violence and um, spread awareness because oftentimes what we see is that people don't know that they're in domestic violence situations and we want to make sure that they are able to identify that and get support um, where they need it. And um, we, we have um, a tremendous amount of um, resources that, uh, that's going to help us not only um, use this fund to um, create the film, but also take it to another level and um, make sure that it gets seen to as many people as possible, not only in the state of Connecticut, but also um, as far as we can go. So thank you. Thank you. 10 seconds of that. Last year I was here alone, and I like what Mr. Joseph said, I like graphs that go up. So last year, uh, the, through the foundation, I was able to give over 600 backpacks to boys and girls in our town through TMC. That was last year, because I was alone last year. You guys remember. But like I said, I like graphs that go up. But thank you. That was my time. Uh, right. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Representing sophisticated, worthy, and gifted gentlemen out of Trinity College, Mr. Mazin Khalil. Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. Um, good evening. I, I know I'm having you guys repeat twice, but uh, thank you so much to the Prosperity Foundation for allowing us this, uh, this grant right here. Just to really quickly tell you guys about my organization, I started as a sophomore in high school because I realized that the graduation rate for young black men in Brooklyn, New York, where I, um, I live, is 56%, which meant that out of all of the young men in my high school, there was 156 of us, about 70, 70-ish were going to graduate. The rest were supposed to be either in jail and then from... And then out of those who graduated, only about 3% were supposed to go to college. So I started this organization in order to kind of get us together and into community service and to positive community service building, and then finally into graduating from high school and going to college. So 
Uh, this organization um, just came to Trinity College and what we're going to be doing with this grant is actually putting in a lot of work into Hartford. We will be doing academic support for students in Hartford um, and basically just trying to do the work that we've emulated in New York up until now. Uh, we have had a 100% graduation rate for the past nine years, so we're hopefully, yeah. hopefully going to be able to replicate those results in Hartford. So I thank you guys immensely for putting your faith in us and for allowing us this opportunity. All right. Thank thank you. You. Okay, so they've been stealing other people's 32 seconds, okay? <laughs> so we have to speed talk the rest. Sorry, there's just so many great organizations we want you to know about them. Representing Queen Anne Nzinga Center Incorporated, Ms. Dana Snell. Hey, there you are. Did I say that right? Oh, good. <laughs> I believe the children are our future. That's it. My time's up. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm Dana Snell. I am from the Queen Anne and Zynga Center. We've been around um, using empowering youth through the arts um, for almost 30 years. We are the most um, stable, invisible organization here. So I want everybody to take my picture and come to all our programs. We we use the arts and the music. Um, music. It's multicultural. It's multi generational. It's built on the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Go to our website. Come to our programs. I love Howard. <laughs> And his wife and his whole family, because we go way back. And, um, and so I just, I'm grateful, but I, I know I'm talking too long, but I'm going to run, I promise. I just want to say that it's so, imp I'm so honored to be a recipient of the, I, the incredible thoughtfulness and idea that Howard had to lift us up. I really mean that, you know? And we have, to, we have to invest in investors. And we have to invest in ourselves and our kids. All right, bye. Go to my website. Oh, go to her website. That's what she said. <laughs> they are. Okay, last one in the Hartford area is, and we heard from our testimony from Girls for Technology, Ms. Sabrina Tucker Barrett. you all again. Um, to date, we've been able to serve 500 girls throughout Hartford County. Um, so this year's uh, funding will go towards our summer initiative and to expand our after school program. Thank oh, you. Yes. She's the example. All right. That was like 10 <laughs> seconds. All right. <laughs> you did good too, Pastor. Okay. <laughs> Coming down to the New Haven County, representing Inextricably Bound, Pastor Keith King. All right. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, I am just so delighted to be here, and I want to thank Howard K. Hill and the board members, but I just got the vision from the speaker about what this is all about, uh, African Americans being able to give back to their community. Uh, it's always good to receive money from whomever you receive money from, but when I thought about what's happening here, uh, it's phenomenal. And so it made me feel good that we're able to give back to our communities ourselves. So I thank you for what you're doing here. Inextricably Bound, uh, it endeavors to do two things. One uh, is close the educational gap. Uh, many of you know that if our children do nothing over the summer, they end in June, they do nothing but play basketball and sports over the summer, they actually uh, come back in the fall two months behind where they left off. And so we want to close that achievement gap, uh, but it's a summer enrichment camp and leadership academy. Uh, so that leadership academy Academy is all about really helping our teenagers become more employable. So they think they are helping us out, but we're actually trying to grow them up. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a success the last five years, and this uh, fund, uh, this um, money that you've given us will allow us to give inner city kids scholarships so they don't have to pay. So I thank uh, you for what you're doing, and God bless you, and I'm on board. Eh? So Amen. thank you so much. I actually just thought I was coming to get the check, but this is good. <laughs> good. I know about it. <laughs> um, representing the New Haven chapter of the Lynx Incorporated, Ms. Kathy Graves. Oh, no? Okay. Representing. Let's go. 
Okay. Y'all work that out. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Pat Brett, and I am with New Haven Chapter of Lynx. And to my right is Camille uh, Cooper, and she is the writer of the grant. So thank you, Prosperity Foundation. Um, we submitted a grant for our National Society of Black Engineering program. Uh, we collaborate with St. Martin de Porres, and we were able to bring 18 students uh, to the Eli Whitney Museum for a science project. And here's the most touching part of the story. So uh, we had six sessions at the Eli Whitney Museum dealing with pulleys and, you know, all that kind of physical science stuff. And um, the idea was sort of to pick out who is rising to the top. And we were able to pull out or recognize one African-American male seventh grader who excelled and performed beyond imagination. So we recognized him at the end of the program. And then we went back to his school and said it was student so-and-so. And the principal said, that is amazing. First of all, the student told us he wanted to be an engineer. But the principal told us, and there's nothing wrong with honorable janitor or bus driver, but those were his goals. And so we are so pleased to be able to mentor him, to have that program, to bring him out and continue his life as a seventh grader. So thank you. We offered six sessions with our own money. And now we have six more sessions with Prosperity Foundation money. And here's what I'm going to close and say. Give back and give black. Thank you. She said it all. Okay. <laughs> Representing Beulah Heights First Pentecostal Church in New Haven, Miss Stephanie Slay or your representative that's here. Okay. <laughs> okay, Reverend Brooks. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I just want to say thank you to the foundation for your gift. Um, and to the speaker, I am inspired. I'm here representing uh, our program because the director of the program is getting her uh, sixth year certificate uh, so she can move up in education to become uh, an administrator. And so, uh, but I think she would have really been inspired. And so thank you, Howard. Thank you, board. I really do appreciate it. Thank you again. Representing, representing Phenomenal I Am Incorporated, Ms. Brittany Baines and her organization. Good evening, everyone. We are representing the board for an organization called Phenomenal I Am, started by Brittany Baines about four years ago. It is an empowerment and enrichment program, mentorship programming, servicing black and brown young girls in the city of New Haven with a strong, heavy focus on positive self-image, identity development, and self-worth. So this fund will help us put on our second um, summer program for 25 girls called Still I Rise. Thank you so much. Representing con Concepts for Adaptive Living, Mr. Curtis Hill. Oh, that's going back in the pot? I'm kidding. We'll, we'll make sure. <laughs> we'll make sure that they get that. Um, representing the um, Alpha, Alpha Phi Alpha New Haven chapter, Mr. Albert Lucas. At least, yeah, I know I saw him, right? They're calling all, all the alphas to the floor. That's what he's calling. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mr. Lucas, how are you? Everybody's here? Okay. Uh, in the spirit of all that's been said today, we're going to reclaim our time. Uh, <laughs> reclaim our time. <laughs> anyway, that being said, we want to say thank you uh, to the foundation. Uh, as you know, I was there when we started talking about this. Um, what we're doing right now with these wonderful young men we have here, uh, we have some teachers, some social work, some 
uh, psychologist. We're working with young black boys in New Haven, uh, middle school age boys, so that seventh grader, we need to talk to you about him. Um, and we are going to, this is our cohort that we'll be following all the way through um, until they finish their education and get into the professional world. Um, so with these funds, we're able to continue that work and keep that moving. Um, and hopefully in a few years, they'll be standing here in our place. So thank you very much. Representing the Walter E. Luckett Foundation Incorporated out of Hamden, Connecticut, Mr. and Mrs. or just Mrs. Luckett. All right, <laughs> Miss Belita Luckett. Oh, both are coming up. Okay. She is the boss. <laughs> He's so smart. <laughs> really would like to, uh, many thanks to Nancy and Howard and to the Prosperity Foundation and to the board. Uh, we were incorporated in 2013. Uh, we reach over 300 what we call youth at potential. Uh, we work in life skills, health wellness, and the funding will be used for SAT, ACT prep. We also would like to congratulate everyone else who is here. Congratulations for all the hard work that you do in the communities. God bless you. Thank you so much. Representing the Theta Epsilon Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Dr. Kalila Brown Dean. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I want to have my members of Theta Epsilon Omega please stand. This is not cutting into my 32 seconds. Please. <laughs> I just wanted you to see them. Thank you for being here tonight. And I want to thank the Prosperity Foundation. Howard called me a couple of years ago with this crazy idea. We've been fighting about it ever since. But it is beautiful to see the investment that you are making into our people that I know you love tremendously. The initiative that we have launched is called Seats at the Table. And we launched that initiative because we knew that last year, all the headlines said black women saved America after the Alabama Senate election. And the question that we asked is, yes, we did, but what do we get in return? So we realized that no one was coming to save black women and girls but us, meaning black women collectively. And so when we see black women being kicked off of a golf course and being threatened with arrest for a club that they belong to, when we see a young black woman being killed in the Waffle House and her killer being offered a $2 million bond, when we see another sister in this state exercising her civic duty, being questioned by a legislator who is more offended by her lapel pin than about the economic situation of black women and families in our state, we knew it's time to claim our seats at the table. And so that is what we are going to do to empower the voices of black women in every sector of civic society, not beholden to party and ideology, but based on the realization that when black Black women are successful, our communities thrive. So thank you to the Prosperity right. Foundation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Representing uh, Farnham Community, Ms., uh, Mr. Jamel Cato. Okay. Representing Sisters Journey, Ms. Dawn White Bracey. I know Sisters Journey is here. All right. First, thank you to the Prosperity of Foundation for um, awarding us um, with this grant money. Um, these are two survivors from Sisters Journey. Sisters Journey is a breast cancer organization. Um, it, it was uh, founded by my mom, who was a breast cancer survivor for 12 years, um, Linda White Epps. Um, when she started the foundation, she was in, I guess, five years into it, she passed away. So. Um, then my mother, my grandmother took it on and then I took it on. So um, 20 years of breaking the silence, uh, 20 years of steering, uh, sharing stories of hope. And that's what Sister's Journey is about. We create a calendar of breast cancer survivors uh, sharing their stories of hope. And again, these are two survivors from um, our calendar. So thank you very much again. Representing Booker T. Washington Academy of New Haven, Mr. John Taylor. There he is. Uh, 
I want to want to take a second to first acknowledge the power in this room. Yes. Oh my God! I mean, seriously, I'm I, I got goosebumps listening to the testimonies. Um, I just hope we we leverage this power when any of us need help uh, because this is this is I haven't experienced this in a long time. So thank you very much. Uh, major thanks to the Prosperity Foundation for supporting the Booker T. Washington uh, before and after school care program. Uh, we run a school that's open from 6.30 to 6.30. Our goal is to make life uh, better for our parents, um, in particular our single moms. And we, we run a really um, enriching um, uh, after school program where we serve about 100 students. And, and this, um, this, this grant is going to, to assist with uh, scholarships for about 30 of those students who can't afford to pay the $25 a week fee. So thank you very much. And drum roll for the very last number 22 grant for this year. <laughs> Representing the Waterbury chapter of the Lynx Incorporated, Ms. Adrian Parkman and her rest of her committee. Oh, yay! Rounding it off! Yay! Thank you for being so patient. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to wait for my check. Okay. <laughs> well, so I can capitalize on all the minutes that were left over because there was that. Good evening, everyone, and thank you. Thank you to Howard and Nancy and the, the board of the Prosperity Foundation for your generosity and your, your truly, truly investing in our communities. Uh, I am Adrian Parkman. I am president of the Waterbury, Connecticut chapter of the Lynx Incorporated, and I would like to have all my Lynx sisters here, and they're Lynx sisters in New Haven. We have Lynx sisters everywhere, um, and I thank you all. Um, I want to do, especially thank you for investing in Waterbury. Waterbury is also that, that forgotten city in Connecticut for a variety of reasons. Um, <laughs> but uh, I am born and raised in, in Waterbury. I'm very proud of where I, where, I, where I grew up and where I came from because it made me who I am today. So we are the fifth largest city in Waterbury with the greatest poverty. So our program, Linking to the Future, um, we started this program about 10 years ago. And we've been working with the most at-risk students in our, in our communities to make sure they have role models, to make sure they can see us, to make sure that they are ready for college or careers. So we are very, very proud of that work and to make sure they have some internships, um, SAT and ACT prep, because we know our kids are left behind and they don't even know they're left behind. And so we want to make sure they are ready. So these dollars will expand that program to make sure that we have more internships, we have more college and career readiness, and we are extremely grateful and thankful and will use the money wisely. Yeah. So thank you. And Let's give all of these wonderful recipients a round of applause. Wow, don't you just feel like working with all of them, don't you? Yes, you do. Um, before Mr. Hill comes up, I just want to take this time to introduce um, members of the Board of Prosperity Foundation because you may only see our emails and our website, but you need to know who the faces are. Uh, so I'm going to start with Ms. Carolyn Vermont. She's our board member. <laughs> Ms. Kathy Graves. Mr. Larry Conaway. Mr. Eves Joseph. Nancy Hill, who is not here this evening, she's also a board member, and of course, our chairman and founder, uh, Mr. Howard Hill. At this time, um, Howard is going to come and give the reason why you should get involved. Um, I worked, I've worked with Howard for the past 10 years at the funeral home, um, and it's not just a funeral home. It is truly a, um, it's a, it's a, um, it's a community, right, it, it, it is where you get so much information. But I really thought I was just going to run the business, you know, just be a business manager. And he opened my eyes to so many things that were going on in our community where it was deeper than just servicing families. It had to be about servicing our community, even while we were still alive. So when he started talking about this Urban Prosperity Foundation, then it turned into the Prosperity Foundation. Uh, we were having cookouts, we were having meetings. I'm like, this man is crazy. 
but you know, we're staying up late and we're changing the mission statement like 40 different times. Um, but truly getting involved, he's the only one that can tell you that and how we can stay involved because not only am I a true believer, but if, if it, if it, even if I didn't live in Connecticut, I would still believe in this direction and what we're doing here. So ladies and gentlemen, our chairman, Mr. Howard Cahill. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, to the board, uh, I want to thank you all for uh, your support, um, putting up with me. Uh, it could be a little cantankerous at times, but um, very, very passionate about this work. Um, as Dr. Dean said, I truly, really, truly love, I love my people to death. No pun intended. <laughs> Is, is there anyone from the uh, Graustein Memorial Fund? Anyone from the Graustein Memorial Fund here? Anyone from the Community Foundation here? Dr. Dean, would you mind just standing up and please being recognized? Dr. Akbar. Dr. Akbar as well. <laughs> is anyone from the Hartford Foundation or the Fairfield County Community Foundation? Okay. Um, I wanted to make sure that I acknowledged uh, the uh, board members of the uh, other foundations because that's actually where uh, I got this idea to be to create our own fund, our own foundation. Um, while serving on the board at the community foundation, I saw the great work that was being put into the community, but I also saw uh, there was a void. There was a disconnect somewhere along the line, um, and the disconnect was. Uh, probably due to the lack of understanding of the needs of our community. And I said to myself, who, who knows us best other than us? So we know what's wrong with us, and I believe that we know how to fix our own problems. So philanthropy is such a powerful instrument that I don't believe that we take advantage of, but we can do it. We run the systems of this country. We control them. We basically are doing the work. What we need to do is come together. We have to aggregate. Not competing, but we have to come together. And we have to coordinate ourselves. And we have to laser focus our philanthropy. Philanthropy is an opportunity to change our future. Now tonight, I'm here to, to ask you for money. <laughs> and I'm not necessarily that good at it, but I know how to do it. <laughs> but I know someone that's really good at it. Kathy Graves, come on up here with me, Kathy. <laughs> I do want to give you the opportunity, I just want to stretch your imaginations just for a little while uh, and talk about the opportunities uh, with organization funds. This is what Kathy whispered in my ear. So Kathy, would you just talk to the folks about this idea of organization funds? So everyone here tonight sees what happens when you have a fund. All of that income driven off those funds we gave out tonight. And guess what? We'd like to see each of you open an endowment fund to create sustainability for yourselves. That's how we create economic impact. There's also the opportunity to, if you're passionate about something in the community that you don't see this work being done around, you can open up your own donor advised fund. Okay? You get the tax right off the same year. And you get the tax right off the same year. You heard that? Get the tax right off the same year. <laughs> and you don't have to put the money on the streets right away. You can think about what you want to do with it, right? There's also a thing called giving circles where if you do not have a specific idea or you're not sure about what you want to do and you have some other folks feeling the same way, you can come together and you can create a, a giving circle. And then you can decide, the, the group can decide on what they want to invest their money in. So there's different ways that we can be a part of this dream, this 
Prosperity Foundation. And we can, we can laser focus our resources back to our community. Tonight, there are some envelopes that are on the table out in the front. I'm gonna invite everyone to take one. If you have your checkbook, you can write a check tonight if you like. But I do want you to give because that's where the power is. The power is in giving, not necessarily receiving. I want you to experience what we experience. This is some hard, 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 hard work, but I will never give up. I'd rather work to death building my community than work in someone else's system building a false dream. I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you all for coming this evening. God bless you. Well, this actually concludes our program for this evening. We'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out this evening. Please make sure you return one copy of your grant recipient letter to me. Um, even if I'm talking, just put it in my face because I do need to have that this evening. Uh, yes, yeah, sign it and make sure that I receive it. Um, but please remember to um, finish up any of the food that's back there and uh, encourage one another, keep each other in our prayers, and look forward to seeing every one of you next year. If you are tweeting or you're on Facebook or Instagram and you've taken pictures, our hashtag is on the program at the bottom, hashtag ProsperityTPF. Um, so make sure you tag us because funders follow the, the hashtag. Foundations follow the trend. And so we want to make sure that they see what happened this evening. Our video for this the evening is also being recorded on video. So you will look for our YouTube channel. We'll make sure that you receive that link so that you can share that with your friends as well. Thank you again, Ms. Bathia, for being an awesome, awesome, awesome addition to tonight. Thank you to each and every one of you. Drive home safe. Oh, and there are parking discounts, not free. Discounts. <laughs> Tickets, okay, uh, discount tickets, and they're at the front desk, so make sure you take one per vehicle. <laughs> not, <laughs> not everybody in your car, one discounted voucher per vehicle that's parked here. All right, All right. Um, if after, after Mr. Hill, then we are dismissed. All right. If we can all please stand and give a hearty, hearty, hearty thank you and applause for Orsella. She put this whole thing together. <laughs> thank you. I also want to, just one more time, if you would please give a round of applause for Bathia as well. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Have a good night.